Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen, amen. Let's see. Uh, are we online? We know? Okay. Good morning uh, to those of us who are who are joining online. God bless you. All right, so right away we'll jump into our Sunday school lesson for the day. Uh, lesson number two. Last Sunday, uh, we were looking at a topic, uh, making melody in your heart. And we, uh, we making melody to the Lord, rather. And we got to examine, you know, what is a psalm, what is a hymn, and what are spiritual songs. And we talked about that. And we, you know, we had, you know, different conversations and different people shared, you know, what is a spiritual song? You know, why do we sing spiritual song? What is a psalm? Psalm. Why do we, you know, sing psalms? Why do we sing hymns? Um, so I, I hope during the course of the week, you know, you've all <clears throat> taken some time to make melody to the Lord in your heart by, you know, composing your own psalms, right? Because you have the Spirit of God in you by saying words back to the Lord, you know, to praise Him for who He is in your life, to adore Him for what He's done in your family, to give Him glory for all He's done in your lineage, in the generations of your family before you, in the generation of your family to come, you know, we got to praise God. So that's what we talked about last week, making melody in our hearts of the Lord. And then we differentiated, you know, what is a spiritual song? You know, really the difference is, you know, what's, what is in the word that you're saying and what is in the heart of the word that you're saying to God, right? What is in the heart? What is the heart of the word? Where is the word coming from? What is, where is the word going to? A spiritual song essentially is a word where we offer our words where in our hearts our focus is on God. Our focus is on God's grace, on God's mercy, on God's goodness, right? It's on, God, on God's power. That is a spiritual song where it comes from our heart, it comes from our spirit, and it's a words that are words directed back to God to give Him praise, to adore Him, you know, to tell the word of His grace. That is a spiritual song. Amen. All right, so we'll flip over today and uh, kind of similar, similar line to talking about like praising God and making melody. But today in lesson number two, um, and we have a new manuals. Um, I think some of them may be back there. So maybe when the ushers come today, anyone who doesn't have yet can grab a copy from the ushers. Um, and for those who are home, you can, you can come down, you know, just to pick your copy if you're not, you know, back in the church yet. But really... I encourage everyone who is online, who is still home, uh, please, it's time to get back in the house. Uh, th there's great benefits when we come together and fellowship together, right? Uh, it does something for me, it does something for you. There's great, there's goodness in that. So I encourage you uh, to have faith in God and, and, and return back uh, to fellowship in person, um, you know, if you will. Amen. So, lesson number two, and the title of this lesson is The Basics of Thanksgiving. The Basics of Thanksgiving. So, we were talking about Thanksgiving today, and uh, our lesson text is from Psalms chapter 105, verse 1 through 7. Do we have a second mic? Psalm chapter 105, verses 1 through seven. Again, if someone would just read for us, any any offers? Psalm chapter one oh five. Yes, please. So the people online can hear you. Can hear you. Thank you, man. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the hearts. Amen. Thank you very much, man. God bless you. 
And then we have a memory verse. Uh, we will all read it together. A memory verse is from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 20. And we'll read. If you're there, just give me a signal. I'll wait for you a little bit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. It looks like we are there. Memory verse, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. It says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Once again, let's read it. Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Giving thanks first is always number two is for all things giving thanks always for all things there is no exception right giving thanks always for all things not some things not sometimes so when we see a scripture like this you know this kind of things i, I always take pause where scripture is not giving us you know uh any room not to do this you know, it says, give thanks always for all things. So there's no other way. There's no other option, right? If we are almost, it's a requirement now. Give thanks always for all things. You know, there's no, no other, nothing is left out. So, you know, we really have to then examine, and this is what we try to do today in our lesson, why? And I always like to ask the why, because I want to believe that you know god does not just say things just because right we don't and, and as believers we don't do things just because if as believers we are doing things just because then we are becoming religious and there's no profit in that there's no profit to just do things because we need to understand why we are doing what we are doing if god says in the scriptures through the apostle paul and says give thanks always always Give thanks for all things. So in, in always, it means there will be good times, there will be bad times, right? Because that's just life. There are the vicissitudes of life, the ups and downs of life, always. For all things. Also suggests that there will be good things, there will be bad things. But it says for all things. So I pray that as we, we look through scripture today, you know, if you, there are things you already understand about Thanksgiving, the Holy Spirit will amplify those understandings in your life. And if there are things that you are yet to really understand, if, you don't, if you're not clear, why do we do this? Why, do, why does scripture admonish us to thank God? Why does the pastor on the pulpit say, you know, let's pray prayers of thanksgiving? Why do we do that? We'll look through a couple of things today and the Lord will help us. If we turn back to our text in the book of Psalms, Psalms 105, uh, we read verse 1 to 7. If you look again carefully at that scripture, you will have to ask the question, why? You have to ask the question, why? Look at what he's saying. And I read from the New, New, uh, New King James Version, Psalm 105. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. It's an exclamation mark. Like, please do this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Why? I'm putting that there. Why? Right? It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Why? Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Why? Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Based on what? Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. I think verse 7, you know, starts to give us an indication. If you read Father from verse 7 and verse 8, you begin to see some of the whys of why he's asking us to do all these things. Tell everybody about his wondrous work, sing of his praises. He is the Lord our God, verse 7. His judgments are in all the earth. Just one leading us into some of the why. 
Before we go further, I want to just preface our study by saying this. There is nothing that you do as a believer, as a Christian, anything that Scripture admonishes, admonishes you to do, please understand that it's not for God's sake. It is for your sake. Everything that we do as a believer, when you say praise God or thank God or worship God or dance to God, it's not for God. It is for you and I. God is already God. You can't do anything to add to him. You can't do anything to make him more God. He is God. So when we, when we study these things in scripture, keep in mind that this is for my sake. I keep in mind that this is for my sake. It is for my good. It is for my benefit. We're not doing this to make... Yes, when we do these things, God would be pleased with us. Absolutely. But uh, don't think you're doing God a favor. By, by thanking him or by praising him or by worshiping him or by living for him. You're not doing him a favor. It is for your good. It is for my good. It is for my sake. It is for my future. It is for my tomorrow. It is for my generations to come that I do, that we do these things. So let's just keep that in mind uh, as we go forward. I'll read our lesson introduction. It says, people are often too brief and they ignore the details are too busy to glorify God and thank Him for His blessings. People are too, often too brief. If I am brief, if I am ignoring, you know, if I'm just saying, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, could it be because I don't understand why I ought to give thanks? Could it be because you don't understand why you ought to give thanks? And that's also not to suggest that, oh, you know, the only way to give thanks is to, is to be there for 100 hours. That means you've given thanks. That's not what that suggests. But it's just saying that sometimes we, we are too brief. We are too much in a hurry. When we talk about giving thanks, we don't take it seriously. And I think maybe part of the reasons for that could be because of what we don't really understand. People are often too brief and ignore details or too busy to glorify God and thank Him for His blessings. Usually, many believers focus more on what God has not done than on what He has done. Giving of thanks is one of the most distinctive marks of a true believer. Giving of thanks is one of the most distinctive marks of a believer. If I ask you and say, hey, what are some of the main characteristics of a believer? Giving of thanks has to be one of the things that you, you list out. What are the things that, you know, characterize, that defines a believer? You're going to talk about, oh, a believer is someone who is holy, right? A believer is someone who loves God. A believer is someone who shares the gospel. You have to mention the fact that a believer is someone who gives thanks. It is a mark. It is supposed to be a, a defining mark of a believer. But sometimes we, 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 we come to find that it's not necessarily the case. We talk about holiness. We talk about righteousness. We talk about, you know, not sinning, not lying, telling the truth. But let's not forget that giving of thanks is also supposed to be one of the defining line in the sand that differentiates a believer from a non-believer. Giving of thanks. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, eight, verse 18, a popular scripture. Let's have someone read it for us. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18. It's similar to Ephesians 5, 20 that we read earlier. So just to buttress that scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. Any volunteers to read for us? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, man. If we read, uh, I'll talk about, we'll talk about this briefly. But if we read the book of Jeremiah 29, verses 11, what does he say? Jeremiah 29, 11.
And then what we usually feel when we read that scripture, like, this is God's will for me, right? God has good plans for me. It will bring me to an expected end. We feel good when we read that scripture. Jeremiah 29, verses 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, the thought of good and not of evil, you know, to bring you to an expected end. We feel great. But we feel the same way when we read Thessalonians 5.18. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 literally is telling us that this is God's will for you. But I think if we examine ourselves, sometimes the, the way we feel about Jeremiah 29.11, is that the way you feel about 1 Thessalonians 5.18? Awesome. We have, a, we have a thanker in the house, right? Awesome. But is, it, is that the case for a lot of, a lot of people? Do we, do we attach the same you know, emotion or, or feeling or whatever you want to call it? So Jeremiah 29, 11, as we attach to 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, that literally tells us, this is God's will for you. He thanks in everything. This is God's will for you. So remember I said we have to understand the whys. Why do we do this? Why does Scripture admonish us, admonishing us to do this? I think one of the key reasons that we have to keep in mind, when we say give thanks, when I give thanks, I am pleasing God because I am doing his will. When you give thanks, you are making God very happy because you are doing his will. If you don't know God's will, in, you, know, you don't know any of his will at all, just give thanks. You are in his will. Just give thanks according to Ephesians 5 verse 20. Give thanks always for all things. If you can do that alone as a believer, you are in God's will. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks always. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. For you as a saved, for you as a redeemed, this is God's will. So you, you're beginning to understand the whys, the whys, the whys. Why do we do this? Let's look at another scripture. Uh, we'll jump into a lesson outline one now. It talks about having the right view, the right perspective about giving thanks. Uh, turn with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse uh, 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please read verse 7 again. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's all read verse 7 together. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Now read verse 6 together. Then what will happen in verse 7? Now let's read it together, 6 and 7. What, do you, what does anyone understand from this, that scripture we just read? Verse 6 and 7, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. What is verse 6 saying? And what is verse 7 saying? Praise the Lord. I believe it's saying that there's a condition we have to fulfill in order to maintain peace and harmony within us and around us. And so it gives us the condition as not being anxious. Instead, you know, just be thankful. As you are thanking God, bring your request before God, and you will discover that peace is all you have. But I want to add something. And uh, that is, you know, you are telling us the reasons why 
we should. And I wanted to, you know, submit, make a submission as to why we don't. Why we don't sometimes, we are not thankful. For instance, last weekend was uh, Easter. And for any serious believer that has some level of depth, it is, it, it, is, it is the most sober, you know, soberest, <laughs> you know. It, that, that, that's the, the, the focal point, yes, of our faith. But we just see as Easter now in America, they're hunting for eggs. And, uh, you know, some of us join them to do that. That is the focal point of our, it's a time to really reflect on our salvation. If you watch the passion of Christ, you know, I mean, it, it will do something to you. And so when we really think through what Jesus did and the significance of what he did for you personally, you will be thankful. Thank you very much. God bless you. So she said two things. So let me just try to summarize and amplify it. Um, she may help us understand the connection. We were reading Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. You see, again, part of the reasons why we don't give thanks, right, is because there's trouble, there's fire on the mountain. It doesn't make sense to give thanks when there's trouble. What, what we'd rather do is to kabash, ga 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 right, because there's fire on the mountain. Scripture says give thanks. Again, remember I said at the beginning, when we do these things, the things that Scripture asks us to do, it's not because of God. It's for your sake. It's for my sake. It's to help me. So when I'm giving thanks in the midst of trouble, it says, peace of God. The peace of God. The peace of God. Which surpasses all understanding. Do you know what that means? It cannot be explained how you have peace in the midst of this trouble. It surpasses all understanding. The very fact that you are giving thanks, you know what it does? It elevates the power of God in your heart. It magnifies the strength of your creator in your life. Then you can have peace in the midst of commotion. And what can you really do? Where can you really go? How far can you really move in your life when you don't have peace? What can you really achieve when you don't have peace, when you are troubled? What kind of, what, what good decision will you make when you don't have peace? What good decision would you make when you don't have rest in your heart? What good parenting can you do when you're, when you're troubled all the time in your mind? Can you be a good parent? Can you be a good father? Can you be a good mother? Can you be a good husband? Can you be a good wife? There's almost nothing you can, anything, there's almost nothing good that you can come to when there's no peace in your mind. If you're troubled, you will make hasty decisions. You will walk away from the true solution because your eyes blurry. There's trouble. But scripture says, in everything, be anxious for nothing. In everything, by prayers, and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And then the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts. It says guard your hearts. Now it's guarding your life. The peace of God is guarding your life. It's like it's painting a path for you to follow. It's clearing a path for you to follow now because you have peace. That path can be literally right there in front of you, but if you don't have peace, you don't see it. So we praise, we thank God always for all things so that we can have peace, so that we can live in peace, so that we can have peace in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. So that we can be like Jesus, who in the boat that is about to be to capsize and be run, out, run over by the sea, is chilling, he's sleeping. He ain't troubled, he has been giving God thanks. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So what? Number one, we talked about it's God's will. First Thessalonians 5, 18. It is God's will that you give thanks. What does God expect of me? Give thanks. Say it loudly. What does God expect of me? What is God's will for me? What is God's will for me? What is God's will for me? What does giving thanks do for me? It gives me peace. What does giving thanks do for me? 
He gives me peace. Let's look at another scripture. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. It's the Old Testament after the book of Ezekiel. Um, uh, let's read real quickly. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. 10 to... Uh, we can't read all of it. Okay, let's just read verse 10 and then I'll, 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 I'll explain it for the sake of time. Daniel 6 verse 10. When Daniel knew... And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did often time. Amen. Thank you, man. So, so just give you a little bit of background. Uh, a decree was made because of Daniel, right? This wicked man said, okay, because of Daniel, we're going to make a law that no one else should pray to any other God, right? They were trying to kill Daniel. That was their plan. They wanted to catch him, you know, breaking the law so that they could put him in trouble, put him in prison, get him killed. Because this was a prophet of God, who God was blessing, who was giving the king, you know, great counsel, just serving God. But these people wanted to put him in trouble. Now, see what Daniel did. As soon as Daniel learned about that plot, Daniel 6 verse 10 says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open, toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day, and prayed, and along with the praying, what did he do? And gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. He had been doing this since he was a young boy. As was his custom since his early days. Now, you know the, how the story ended. He was cast into the, into the lion's den, but what was the end of it? We know that the end of it was that Daniel's enemies were the ones who were thrown into that den. Daniel came out of that lion's den untouched. Now, what I want to point out to us here is that giving thanks, if you give thanks, if I give thanks, I am creating an avenue for God to step in, right? For God to step in into my challenge, for God to step in into my situation, right? I'm calling, your, your giving of thanks is basically like you're calling God. God step in, God step in, Father step in. You are calling God's power when you give thanks. We see this exemplified in the life of Daniel. He prayed and gave thanks. He prayed and gave thanks three times a day. And God came to his defense. So another reason why you should give thanks, why I should give thanks, is because God is going to step in. I want God to step in. Does anyone not want God to step in into their situation? Does anyone not want God to step in into their confusion? Does anyone not want God to step in into their trouble? Give thanks. Give thanks and give thanks. So let's run through those three things we've talked about. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Why do we give thanks? First Thessalonians 5, 18. Why do we give thanks? It is the will of God for you and I in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 5, 18. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Why do we give thanks? So we can have peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Daniel, verse, uh, Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Why do we give thanks? So that God can step in to our situation. So do you see in any of these things where we give thanks because of God? We give thanks because of us. Yes, when we give thanks, we are glorifying God. We are exalting him. We are worshiping him as we should. But really, it is for my benefit. Is God not great? That he has created these ways for me to get help. Is he not awesome? Because you know, when you are in that mode of thanksgiving... Your focus is not on your situation. Your focus is not on yourself. When you give thanks, you carry in your body, you carry in your heart, you carry in your mind the greatness of God's power, the awesomeness of God's grace. That's what you begin to well up. You are building up your faith. When you give thanks, you are looking away from your challenge. You are looking onto God who is powerful. That's what, what giving thanks does for you. It, it, it energizes you. It strengthens you. It builds up faith. It builds up hope in you. And you know what the scripture says. 
the book of Romans, hope does not make us ashamed. If you have hope in Christ, you can never be put to shame. No matter how long it takes for your salvation to come, scripture is so clear. I love to have hope. And giving thanks helps me to build up hope. If you have hope in Christ, you can never be ashamed. You can take that to the bank. You can never be ashamed if you have hope in God for any situation. Amen. Now lastly, now that we hopefully to some extent understand why we give thanks, I do want to call out something here. In Romans of the 12, well, actually, let's look at the, the book of uh, Genesis. Let's, let's read the scripture we don't read all the time. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. And we all know Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know, we all recite that. We talk about that a million times. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 and 5. And could someone read for us, please? Genesis chapter 4. Verses uh, 3 and 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in, process, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first, thing, first line of his flock and of the fat thereof and the lord had respect unto abel and to his offering and unto cain and to his offering he said not he had not respect and cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell amen thank you very much um let's uh, just for emphasis, please, uh, verse 4 and 5 again. Verse 4 and 5 again. And please, let's all look at this. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 and 5 again. For emphasis, so we know what we're we're driving at. And, and Abel, he also brought of the first line of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain... And to his off offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Amen. Thank you very much. So Abel uh, uh, brought his own sacrifice. Scripture says God had respect for it. Cain brought his sacrifice. Scripture says God did not have respect for it. And, and just to help you understand what respect is, God basically accepted Cain, not just the offering, he accepted Cain. He did not accept, I'm sorry, he accepted Abel. He did not accept Cain. What I want us to, to, to wrap this up with, even though we understand why we give thanks, if God does not have respect for you, your thanks ain't going nowhere. And what does it mean for God to have respect for you? It means for God to accept you. Are you saved? Do you believe in Jesus? Are you obedient to God's statutes? Can he accept you? Are you obeying his word? Does God have respect for you? Does God accept you? Have you taken hold of his salvation in Christ? For your thanksgiving to produce any good results, you have to be, you need to be accepted of God. You need to live in righteousness. You need to live in holiness. I need to live in righteousness. I need to live in holiness. So that God can have respect for me. So that God can accept me as a person, as a soul. God has to accept you for your praise to have any results. Amen. And that's what scripture also says in the book of Romans. I didn't want us to read that, but just for emphasis. Romans chapter 1 and verse 2. Present yourself to live in sacrifice unto God. God will accept you in Jesus' name so that when you give thanks, it produces the right results. Amen. In conclusion, we should not give thanks only when we are told to, but must make thanksgiving a daily and continuous attitude. We should not give thanks only when we are told to, but we should make thanksgiving a daily and continuous attitude. So let's run through it once again and then we'll wrap this up. What is one reason why we give thanks? 
It's the will of God concerning me in Christ Jesus. What's another reason why we give thanks? It gives us peace. What's another reason why we give thanks? So that God steps in, right? And, and, and what's required for our thanks to actually make any meaning? God has to have respect for you. It means God has to accept you as a person. You have to be acceptable to him. Amen. So let us stand to our feet as we wrap this up in prayer. And I want you to pray for yourself. Um, and pray that the Lord will give you the grace now. Now you have knowledge. Now you have understanding by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now you need grace to do the word. Now you need grace to do the word. Knowledge is not enough. Information is not enough. Now you need to do the word. I need to do the word. So begin to ask the Lord, Father, give me grace to thank you. Lord, give me grace to thank you. Give me grace to thank you always for all things. Give me grace to thank you always for all things. Give me grace to thank you when it is good. Give me grace to thank you when it is bad. Give me grace always for all things.